Arsenal 1, Leicester 1, a tactical analysis. Has Arteta found his best system? So this will be my first video on the Football Terrorist channel. If you like this sort of video, go over and check out my channel and check out some of my other tactical and transfer analysis videos as well. So going into the game, Arteta lined up his side in a 3-4-3 shape with Emiliano Martinez in goal, Mustafi the right-sided centre-back, Kolasinac on the left, David Luiz playing centrally between the two, as Bellerin started as a right wing-back, Kieran Tierney as the left wing-back, and a midfield double pivot of Ceballos and Xhaka, with a front three of Saka on the right, Aubameyang on the left, and Lacazette playing as a centre-forward. Brendan Rodgers lined up his side in a three at the back system as well with Schmeichel in goal, Ryan Bennett on the right of the back three, Johnny Evans centrally and Soyonku on the left with Justin James as a right wing back, Albrighton as an unorthodox left wing back, Tielemans and Ndidi the midfield two with Jose Perez playing in behind the front two with Kalechi Iheanacho and Jamie Vardy. So from the start of the game it seemed like both sides wanted to exert an aggressive press with Leicester's front three being instructed to quickly close down the Arsenal back three in a man-to-man -man press when they received the ball. The Leicester wing backs were also instructed to move out quickly to close down the Arsenal wing backs when the ball went out to them. This pressing tactic was replicated similarly by Arsenal as Lacazette would cut off the passing lane into Johnny Evans when Schmeichel had the ball from Leicester's build up and Aubameyang and Saka were tasked with moving out to close down the wide centre backs with Bellerin and Tierney sticking close to the Leicester wing backs as well. Xhaka would also push out from the midfield line to pressurise on Didi or Tielemans and stop Leicester being able to bypass the Arsenal front line with a simple pass into the central midfielders. With Arsenal's midfield pushing so far up the pitch however, there was space in between the lines that was created. Ayose Perez who was predominantly playing on the left side of that front three would drop deep looking to get into these spaces and receive the ball, however Madison's absence was a big miss for Leicester. This is because Madison is one of the best in the league at picking up the ball in behind the opposition's midfield and being able to turn quickly and dribble into the final third before picking the right pass to create a goal scoring opportunity. Whenever Jose Perez was able to receive the ball in these areas, I didn't think he had the ability to turn quickly on the ball and get running at the back line like Madison would have done. I also felt that Leicester didn't do enough to get the ball into players in behind the Arsenal midfield. But Jose Perez would drop into this space but if they had a centrally advanced midfielder ahead of Ndidi and Tielemans, this would have caused huge problems for Ceballos and Xhaka when they pushed up the field when Arsenal pressed aggressively, as the sheer presence of a player directly in behind them may have forced them to drop slightly deeper, making Arsenal's pressing front five less compact and enabled Leicester to work the ball through the centre of the pitch using Tielemans and Ndidi. I could understand why Rodgers opted for a back three as it meant that Bennett was able to tightly mark Aubameyang on the left side and stop him receiving the ball and running at his fullback. However, this caused more problems for Leicester as Saka and Aubameyang in very Guardiola-esque fashion would hold their width which in turn would stretch the Leicester back three and create spaces between the wide centre backs and Johnny Evans. Arsenal's goal was a great example of this, when the ball is picked up by the Arsenal midfield we can see that Soyonku in moving out to close down Saka has created a massive space on the inside of him, meaning that when Ceballos plays this pass, Saka is able to completely outrun Soyonku and get into the position where he can put the ball across the box for Aubameyang, who played the role of a wide forward perfectly here for the Gabonese to slot the ball away into the net. With both sides playing back threes, the attacking patterns were very evident with both sides looking to funnel their attacks down the channels and in behind the opposition's back line, however I thought Arteta's side did is a lot better than Rodgers' side. Arsenal were able to use Lacazette as a focal point of the attack when he dropped off from the forward line away from Johnny Evans. Arsenal could then get a the pass into his feet while Saka and Aubameyang on the flanks would then be looking to make runs in behind their wide centre-backs. Leicester on the other hand didn't have this kind of forward as Kalecci, Hanacho and Vardy are more poacher-like strikers who will look to make runs in behind the back line rather than dropping off to receive the ball which is why Leicester's attack in play seemed rushed as they continuously look to play long passes looking to get these players in behind too early which just conceded possession rather than using a methodical build-up which they were using before when Madison was in the side. Going into the second half, Leicester did use a more compact pressing 5 which did limit Arsenal's ability to play through their midfield. I thought Rodgers should have switched to a back 4 much sooner as this would have allowed them to push Saka and Aubameyang back into a flat midfield 4, negating their press but instead they stuck with the back 3 and Arsenal's pressing system remained compact and aggressive, limiting Leicester's ball progression through the centre of the pitch. Harvey Barnes made a big impact when he came on to Leicester's left flank as his ability to drop into the half space and advance the attack into the box using his interplay with Leicester's left sided players being the fundamental difference between the first and second halves. His ability to do this can be seen as this season he's made an average of 1.6 passes into the box per 90 minutes, whereas Jose Perez on the other side has made just over half of that with 0.92 per 90 minutes. 
Despite the 3-4-3 shape not totally suiting Leicester, I think this might be the best system going forward for Arteta's side, as the added centre-back in the back line makes it a lot more defensively stable with the wide centre-backs able to move out of the back line to confront players receiving the ball in between the lines, without leaving massive spaces in behind for other centre-backs to cover, which minimises the positional mistakes David Luiz and Mustafi can make. It also allowed Kieran Tierney to motor forward down the left flank and provide an overlapping option to Aubameyang, which was seen here as Tierney receives the ball and is able to put in a dangerous low cross across the box. The turning point in the game however came around the 75th minute with Eddie Nketiah receiving a straight red card. Rodgers was quick to bring on Damari Gray as Leicester moved to a 4-2-3-1 shape. Arteta's side went on the retreat, dropping into a 5-3-1 which became a 6-2-1 at times when Willock dropped deep tracking the run to Christian Fuchs. The tactical mistake is it meant that there was massive spaces wide of Arsenal's midfield double pivot which is where the equaliser came from. Damari Gray and Jose Perez were sitting in these half spaces as Leicester pushed Arsenal back into the defensive third and Gray was able to receive the ball in this sort of position around the box and picked out a top class pass to find Vardy at the back post who made an instinctive movement to pull out just ahead of Mustafi and latch onto the cross to make it 1-1. Arsenal were able to get the draw in the end but it will still be filled with disappointment as this was probably one of their best performances in recent weeks which I think stemmed from the use of the 3-4-3 system. Leicester once again seem to be suffering from a lack of squad depth and maybe also a lack of a deep line forward who can be used as an alternative to link the attack in these types of games as Ihanacho and Vardy both have the attributes that lend themselves to being the striker sitting on the last defender and looking to make runs in behind. I did do a video on my channel looking at who Leicester should sign in the summer transfer window so after this video go over and check that out and remember to subscribe to the Football Terrorist channel and my channel as well.